church family. Join us at our Fairhope campus tomorrow, May 9th at 6 p.m. for our monthly evening of prayer. During this time, we will seek God's face and His will for our lives and for our world. There is power in prayer, and we can't wait to spend this intentional time with you. Hey, 
Hey students, SSKO or Student Summer Kickoff is coming up on June 1st and 2nd. This is an incredible two-day free event for middle school and high school students from all campuses hosted at our Fairhope campus. View details for your campus at threecirclechurch.com slash events. This summer, Three Circle will offer a 12-week course on Christian theology on Sundays at 4 o'clock p.m. at our Fairhope campus. The weekly course will begin June 5th and will conclude on August 21st. The format will be live verbal instruction from a variety of leaders. It is not a Bible study per se. It's a systematic study of who God is and the beliefs that guide daily life as a Christian, which will include a lot of the Bible. The course is free and childcare will be available when you register online. We are kicking off a new season of worship discovery here at Three Circle. We are looking for instrumentalists who play bass guitar, acoustic guitar, electric guitar, keys or drums, as well as vocalists to participate. If you are a passionate worshiper of our Savior and are interested in any of these positions, please fill out a serve card today and we will get back to you this week. You can also text 3C Serve to the number 97000. Hey, what's up, Three Circle family? My name is Blake Stanley. And I'm Jonathan Duke. We're a couple of your pastors here at Three Circle Church. And you probably remember back at the men's conference, guys, that we promised you some pop-up men's gatherings. And so we're about to have our first one. Give them the details. Yeah, on Sunday, May 15th, Right here at the Fairhope campus, we're gonna have a low bowl. We're gonna eat some crawfish, some potatoes, some bottle corn, all that kind of good stuff. Yeah. The good old mud bugs will be in house That's right. here at our Fairhope campus that afternoon at 4 30. We're gonna have our first pop up men's gathering event. So here's what we need you to do we need you to RSVP so we know how much of those bottom feeders to bowl, okay? That's right. All the crawfish, man, That's we right. gotta get all that stuff together, the seasoning and all that. So don't delay. Hey, and if you are a wife if you're a if you're married to a dude right Stay and you're looking at this then you can just go ahead and rsvp for them and just tell them what to do like you normally would right i mean that's probably what some of us guys need right go ahead and register your husband or that guy you want to join us for that sunday and we would love to have them there so may 15th that's a sunday 4 30 p.m fairhope campus be here at our main entrance and we're going to feed you good okay register online at threecirclechurch.com slash events. See you guys there. Good morning, Three Circle family. So good to see you again this week. I wanna invite you to go ahead and stand as you're able all across the room. It's a special day, we have a lot in store. And as we kick off today, I wanna to remind us of the truth of the Psalms. For us to make this our prayer today along with David in Psalm 8 when he said Lord when I consider your heavens the work of your fingers the moon and the stars which you have set in place he says what is man that you are mindful of him another way of saying that is who am I that you would care about me right and so with that heart posture with that posture of gratitude that approach today we settle in and we celebrate our great God we invite you to join us Lift our voices, sing this with me. Who am I that the highest king would welcome me? I was lost, but he brought me in. Oh, his love for me. Oh, his love for me. Who the sun sets free. Jesus died for me. Oh, yes, he died for me. Through the sun sets free. Oh, he's free indeed. I'm a child of God. Yes, I Child 
There's a place for me. I'm a child of God. Yes, I You know, as if it weren't good enough that God would call us a friend, He goes a step further. He calls us sons and daughters, right? He invites us into His family, chosen and adopted, dearly loved as sons and daughters of God. Sing this with me. I am chosen, not forsaken. I am who you say I am. You are for me, not against me. I am who you say I am. Come on, speak truth over yourself today. Chosen, not forsaken. I am who you say I am. You are for me, not against me. I am who you say. We're gonna listen only to the true voice today. I am chosen, not forsaken. I am who you say I am. You are for me. Shadows, you win every battle, 
Nothing can stand against the power of our God. And Almighty fortress, you go before us. And nothing can stand against the power of our God. You shine in the shadows. You win every battle. Nothing can stand against. It could be said that worship is a, a rhythm of revelation and response. The more we see of God, the more and more we should naturally respond to him in worship. And so as we see him today as our sovereign God, who we just sing about, our sovereign God who has us firmly and securely and lovingly held in his hands, it leads us to respond in surrender, right? To respond in trust, to open our hands, to loosen our grip and to say, okay, God, let me remind myself again, my mind and my heart again today, you really are in control. And so today we lean in and trust. We lean in and surrender. And I'm convinced for every one of us in the room, whether you don't yet follow Christ actively as your savior or, or know him in that way, or whether you have known him for 50 years, we all have a step of surrender to take today. So the question to ask in this moment, and as we sing this next song, is what does it look like for me today to surrender? to surrender in a fresh way, wholly and fully to Jesus. So let's sing this together, this prayer of surrender. Take all I have in these hands and multiply, oh God, all that I am and find my heart on the altar again, set me on fire. Set me on fire, we're an offering before him. Take all I have in these hands and multiply. Oh God, all that I am and find my heart yet again. On the altar again, set me on fire. Set me on fire. Here I am, God, arms wide. Fill. I know your purpose for me, you won't forsake me.
Turn your eyes.
regardless of their spiritual limp or their walks of life, that, that we would come together as a church unified, looking to you, fixing our eyes on you as your word says, not with the sense to, to treat you as a pill to solve our problems, but it is just to know, just to let that overwhelming truth that just knowing you is all we need. The fact that you meet us right where we are, yet not I, but you in me, in us. Jesus, we love you and we worship you. We ask this in your name. Amen. Would you grab a seat for me? We'll take this time to welcome everybody to church. Everybody to church. Happy Mother's Day. All of a sudden, attendance went up. Man, this is awesome. Uh, man, if it is your first time at Three Circle Church, we are so, so honored you chose to be with us. There are a lot of churches in Baldwin County. Uh, you know that, I know that, and we, we, we treat that as an honor that you chose to be with us today. So thanks so much for being here. Um, if you haven't already and it is your first time here, we would encourage you to stop by. 
one of those glorious tents that you walked by on your way. And I promise you, we are not weird folks. We're not going to stalk you and follow you around like this and, and ask you weird questions. We just want to make sure at a big church like this, we have, we have a method of answering any questions that you might have. And we have a gift that we love to put in your hand. I like free stuff. Maybe you do too. Uh, so whether it's your first time or you call Three Circle Church home, um, just a reminder of those many cards that you see in the seat backs and you doodle on during Pastor Chris's sermons. Dude, that is our, our method of communicating with you. So from prayer requests to what's going on in your life to maybe even ministry inquiries, again, that is our way of, of communicating with you. And if you are that type of person like me and you're like, man, I don't want anything to do with that and I don't like digital uh, response and all, I want to talk to a face, a person. You can stop by that place called The Hub out there and see my beautiful face. And, and a lot of our staff is going to be present in the lobby again we would just want to answer any questions that you might have now to address all the moms or the mamas in the room to me the word mom is synonymous with hero when I think of, of, of the many moms that have been influential in my life, goodness gracious, the list goes on and on. Here's what I know. Here's what we know at Three Circle Church. For a lot of folks, like if there's a spectrum on one end of this spectrum today, if we're honest and we're just fully transparent with one another here, today you were dreading today. And for a lot of people, it's a happy day. But for, I know for a lot of folks, this is a hard day. Maybe the, the word mom is elusive to you. Maybe there's an empty seat next to you. It just brings pain, sorrow, sadness. The list goes on. Can I tell you, if that is you, your church is for you. Your church is with you, right? We love you. And then I know with that, there, there's the other end of the spectrum, that there are moms in this room. Man. Today is full of, of joy and smiles and sunshine because, again, you're a hero. You're impacting generations, and you're doing such an incredible job. You're killing it in the mom game, so to speak, right? And there's a, there's a broad spectrum. Maybe you fall somewhere in between, but whether or not you are a biological mom, an adoptive mom, a foster mom, a guardian of some sort, even a small group leader, can we do something as a church real quick? Can we celebrate all of the moms in our life real quick? Can we, can we give a round of applause? It's incredible what you do. So on behalf of our staff and on behalf of our church, we just want to extend the warmest and sincere happy Mother's Day, regardless of where you fall on that spectrum. We see you, we love you, and we are for you. And as a token of our appreciation, don't you love free stuff? By the way, we had free stuff in the lobby. If you didn't get one of those candles, some smell awesome and some don't, as you probably know. But Here's the thing. We're, get, we're doing a little giveaway, and we've been doing give, giveaways, giveaways, giveaways at all of our gatherings at all of our campuses. Anybody like some Hello Fresh, aka free food? Uh, some of you are like, no, I don't want that. And if that's you and you don't want free food, here's what I would tell you. My email is tc at threecirclechurch.com. And so I would encourage you to enter in. This is called a QR code. I said barcode last, last gathering. That's a QR code. You can actually take your smartphone out right now. Go on be that person, right? And you can take your camera and point it at that and it'll pull up a link and you can get entered in a, a, a drawing to win. I think it's like seven free meals through HelloFresh, which again, I love free food. Hopefully you do too. Again, one more, just a reminder, if you're like, dude, I don't want that. That's not cool. TC at Three Circle Church. I'll take all the free food that you do not want, but we're selecting a winner throughout all of our gatherings today. If for whatever reason that goes off the screen, you can punch in 3C win at 97,000. You get the same exact link and hopefully you win. If you don't give it to me, you know, anyway. Um, but other than that, we, uh, we're we gonna continue on with our worship. Just as a reminder, uh, these are the many ways that you can give to Three Circle Church. And I want to remind you too, as a church, you are not just giving to three, three Circle Church, but through Three Circle Church. And it's because of your financial generosity, man, we are able to impact the kingdom far beyond 251 area code. And isn't that an amazing thing? You're such a generous church. Now, we're going to continue on with the Apostles' Creed series in just a moment. So let's watch this together.
All right. Hey, good morning, Three Circle. Happy Mother's Day to everyone as we dive into another week of the Apostles' Creed series. We began this series last week. What we're doing is we're looking at this ancient creed, and we're not saying that the the Apostles' Creed, let me make clear, is not authoritative. It is not inspired. It is not holy. It has none of those things. We only reserve those descriptions for the Bible itself. What makes the Apostles' Creed important and helpful to us is it is a summary of what we believe in the Bible. And it is a faithful summary that throughout church history, it has been used as an anchor for the church. Throughout all the things that the church goes through, including today, and a wide array of different theologians and different church uh, leaders have grabbed onto this from Martin Luther to John Calvin to uh, uh, Augustine to Whitfield, all of them. They grab onto these truths. This is what Christians believe, and it is all based on the Word of God. And so we're walking through these big ideas that kind of hold us together as Christians and seeing what it means. And last week we saw that the Apostles' Creed uses the idea of belief. We believe these things, reminding us that Christianity is not a to-do list. Christianity is what we believe. That's very important for us to understand. Also last week, we looked at the fact that we believe in something, and not just something, but someone. We believe in the living God. And we believe that when we say God, we mean the triune God. Three persons, Father, Son, and Spirit. And the Apostles' Creed last week led us to look at God as our Father. He is God, the Father Almighty, meaning that he's our Father. He's close enough to hear our prayers, but he is Almighty. He's big enough to answer them. Aren't you thankful for that truth, right? So as we continue to dive into it, we're going to look now at the next line of the Apostles' Creed, and it says this. We believe, last week we believe in the Father Almighty. We believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. Today we're going to begin looking at the Son. We're going to spend two weeks on uh, God the Son, and today we're going to look at this aspect of the Jesus, the Son of God, that he was fully human and that he was fully God. We're going to look at that and why it's so important. Now, just like last week, we saw that we have these pervasive views of of what the Father looks like from our culture, we have some of Jesus too. In fact, if you grew up like me, many of you think this is what Jesus looks like. You think he looks like that. And because that picture hung in a whole lot of churches and still does, that that picture was in my church growing up. And then the first church I served in as a minister, that picture was there. And I don't want to hurt anyone's feelings. I just want to let you know that guy's name is Fred and he uh, surfs in San Diego. Uh, That's a white dude with 1976 hair. He could be the lead singer of the Eagles. You know what I mean? I mean, that, that's not, and again, I'm going to make you uncomfortable here because you go, that's what I thought Jesus looked like. It's because someone hung that picture up. That's a white dude from San Diego. I'm just helping you here, okay? So there's that pervasive view of who, who Jesus the Son is. And then there was a mini series made in the late 70s that became like maybe one of the big influencers on what people think Jesus looks like. And it was called Jesus of Nazareth. They spent a ton of money, and that became the new pervasive view, at least in America and really worldwide. That guy is a British guy. He's from London. His name's Robert Pattinson, and he's, he, he, his like distinctiveness is his blue eyes. All right? And uh, yeah, right? Not the new one, not Batman, the old one, okay? And so, and his, that, that's his eyes, and look at those eyes, man. And so that's what a lot of people started believing Jesus looked like. Now, I'm sorry, that guy is drinking Earl Grey tea in the morning in London, and they picked him because of his eyes, and that's what Jesus was a Middle Eastern Jewish man. He probably didn't have those blue eyes, okay? I'm just trying to help you. So, uh, and he had the accent. He was fully British playing Jesus. And I've said this forever. You're never going to get a dude from Alabama playing Jesus in one of these movies. Because, hey, y'all just doesn't get it. You know what I mean? Peter, get, get out of here. You know, it's not going to work. So the British guys always get the part. That's probably not what Jesus looked like. So then that was pervasive for about two decades. And then we got, uh, we got this guy. Mel Gibson gave us Jim Caviezel. Became far more accurate as far as Jewish and all that. But again, we get like, we get the best looking, you know what I mean? I mean, like that, it's Jim Caviezel. I mean, he played Monte Cristo and all that. I mean, Jim Caviezel, it's like superhero Jesus. You know what I mean? Jesus with a jawline. I mean, that's, that's Jesus. So we got that for a while. 
And so and the Bible says, you know, that he was just, you would not have looked at him and went, ooh, something special about that guy, but just looking at him. So, so that, w- that became the look. And then about 10 years ago, the Bible series came out, and we got a Puerto Rican Jesus because the actor is Puerto Rican. <laughs> he is. He's Puerto Rican. And, and it's still great. But let me tell you about this Jesus got some good hair, man. I mean, like, they work. You don't wake up with hair like that. You work for hair like that, Okay. And then now we have the Chosen series. The Chosen's come out, and Jonathan, uh, who plays him, is awesome. And Jonathan is from Middle Eastern descent, and he's really cool. And you may not know this, but a few weeks ago we had Greg Laurie preaching here, and Jesus sat right there in those chairs because he came to hear Greg preach, and he was in town. And so we like to say Jesus came to Three Circle that day, okay? (laughs) Yeah, and he's an awesome guy, and that might be a lot the way Jesus looks. And Jonathan's a method actor, but his whole family's Middle Eastern descent, and and so uh, and the Chosen's had a big impact. And we were at lunch with him that day, and he's a method actor, so he's from New York, so he's talking normally. We're having lunch, and then he went into the character. So we're sitting at lunch, and this guy was talking about his shoulder that he had hurt, and Jonathan just went into character, and he reaches over, and he goes, "My son, it is just a flesh wound." And when he did that, we all said, "Wait a minute." Jesus just came to lunch. And just like that, he snapped back out of character. It was awesome. Greg Laurie was like, don't ever do that again, man. You'd freak me out. But with all those views of Jesus, who was Jesus? What do we believe about Jesus? What do we believe about him? That is important. It mattered to Jesus what we believed about him. In Matthew 16, he's talking to his disciples. He, he said this. Now, when Jesus came into the district of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, Who do people say that the Son of Man is? And they said, Some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said to them, But who do you say that I am? Simon Peter replied, You are the Christ, Messiah, and you are the Son of the living God. You are fully God and fully man. And so I want you to understand and write this down. What we believe about Jesus actually determines our eternity. Your future eternity is hanging on a hinge called what you believe about Jesus. A.W. Tozer, great writer, says it like this, what you think when you think about God is the most important thing about you. And in a world that's trying to change what you believe about God and tells you you have your own version of truth, you can come up with your own way, the Bible and the Apostles' Creed stands as an anchor for all Christians of all times to say, no, we don't have our own version of truth. We have Jesus who said, imagine this claim, he said, I am the truth. Like, there's not a version of truth. You don't get to make your own truth. He is the truth. He is the standard of truth. There is a truth, and his name is Jesus. And Jesus is saying to his disciples and to all of us, you're going to have to decide what you believe about him. You and all Christians of all times, real Christians, not just people that do good things, not just people that attend church, but real transformed Christians have all believed the things we're going to talk about today and next week about Jesus. Today, you're going to see that all Christians must believe that Jesus is fully God and fully man. I'm going to tell you why that's important. Let's start with fully man. Let's look back at the creed. It says, we believe in Jesus Christ, God's Son, our Lord, so he's divine, But we believe he was conceived by the Holy Spirit. That made him God, obviously. But he was born of the Virgin Mary. He was a human. Suffered under Pontius Pilate. Human. Crucified. Human. Died. Human. Buried. Human. Jesus was fully man. This is very important for us to understand. Galatians 4, 4 through 5 says this. But when the fullness of time had come, God sent forth his son, born of a woman... Born under the law to redeem. So that's what he did. Here's why he did it. To redeem those who were under the law. That's you, by the way. You should just underline and go, that's me. I'm under the law. So that we might receive. Here's why he did it. So that you and I could be adopted. So that we might receive adoption as sons. Now let's dive into that. First of all, you need to understand why this is important. The way Jesus was born. You need to understand that he really was born. He had a normal human birth in one sense, okay? He was born just like all humans. It wasn't some kind of like lightning from heaven, and there's a baby. And No, no, he was born the way humans are born, fully human. But I want you to see something that the Apostles' Creed made clear. 
born of the Virgin Mary. Now this on Mother's Day is important for you to understand. Where do we get our sin nature? All humans have a sin nature. Where did we get it? On Mother's Day, it's important you understand. From your daddy. <laughs> you got it for, from your daddies. That's where you got it. Because the Bible says in Adam, all of us sinned. It's this idea of headship that the Bible lays out for us. For us to understand this piece of the puzzle, you need to understand that when Adam fell in the garden, he represented all of us. And Jesus then is called in the New Testament the second Adam. So those of us who believe in Jesus through our faith in him by his grace, we then are not represented by Adam anymore. I became a Christian at 12. He doesn't, he doesn't represent me anymore. Adam doesn't. You know who's got my back now? Jesus. You following me? Because Jesus was fully man, but watch this. He was conceived by, what does the creed tell us? And it's based on the word of God. He was conceived by the spirit. So Jesus didn't get a sin nature. Watch this. He was conceived by the Spirit, born of a woman, so that he could be fully God and also fully human, but without a sin nature. Meaning, there's been three perfect humans ever. Adam, Eve, Jesus. Adam and Eve did not remain perfect. Thereby, the problem we all have as humans. Jesus comes, born under the law, just like Adam and Eve were, just like you and I, we're all born under the law, God's law, we all break it. The difference in Jesus and you and I is he was born under the law as a human, but he never broke the law. How many of you know you're all lawbreakers? I got four honest people. Everybody else is lying. You're lawbreakers too. And it didn't take you long to break the law because we all go, well, that's not fair. Adam, just because of Adam, we're all sinners. You lasted like 10 minutes before you were sin. You know what I mean? Like you acted on your nature pretty fast. Like little babies, you know, doesn't take them long. As soon as they can talk, they start lying, don't they? I mean, I love kids. But I mean, you know, you look at you, you clearly see your kids slap somebody. You're like, did you slap them? No. <laughs> Not me. But I mean, you're the only one in the room. I don't know. What me? And it goes on and on and on, right? Jesus comes fully human, but Joseph wasn't his earthly, he's earthly, he's a guardian, but his father, mm -mm, Holy Spirit conceived. Mary was a virgin. Now, let me tell you why this is important. Because, and I heard an actor recently. He's one of my favorite actors. He goes to a church. He claims to be a man of faith. Okay? But, in an interview, he said some things that concern me. That tell me that he's probably not actually a Christian. And here's what he said. He said, yeah, I believe the Bible. But he said, I believe the practical stuff. He said, there's stuff in the Bible, there's things that Jesus said that I can use in my everyday life that's practical, how to treat people, how to love my neighbor, golden rules, stuff like that. He said, but I don't know what to do with the magic stuff. And the interviewer said, well, you're talking about magic. And he said, well, the stuff like, I don't know what to do with, you know, feeding 5,000 people and people raising from the dead and the resurrection and, and uh, virgin birth. I don't know what to do with all that. I don't know how to use that in my life. I, that's not what I'm talking about. I believe in the practical stuff. And you know what I thought? In, my, in that moment, I thought two things. I thought, number one, you're not a Christian. That's, that's not Christianity. That's a philosophy. You believe in philosophies, but you don't believe in a person. You don't believe in the Christianity of the Bible because, listen to me, church, the Christianity of the Bible is miraculous. And it begins with a virgin birth. It begins with the fact that this Jesus we believe in was conceived of the Spirit. He was sinless, but he was fully human, born of a woman. He was born under the same expectations we are, the law of God, which was his own law, and he never broke it. So when he died on the cross, he took our place, sinless. Now, watch this. If you don't believe in the virgin birth, you don't have a Savior. You don't have a Savior. Because if Jesus was conceived by man, he was a sinner under the same curse we are. And the cursed can't take the place of the cursed. Does that make sense, church? You tracking me? I know you're like, this is, this is kind of deep stuff. Man, come on, let's go swimming on the deep end of the pool. Let's go. It's beautiful. It's incredible. It's deep. Christians of all time have done this. It's just been in the last hundred years we started doing church by going, you know, let's just talk about money and marriage and how to live a better life. And let's just repackage that over and over again for years and years and years. You know what you end up with? You end up with churches that are weak and anemic and don't understand who God is. 
That's what we end up with. We need to dive into who God is. We need to know who he is. Because we're facing times where it's being questioned. Who is he really? Well, this is what we believe about Jesus. He was fully man. And he did that to redeem us. If Jesus didn't come the way he did, then we would have no redemption. But we do have redemption because Jesus came. Now watch what happened. Jesus, I want you to understand this. Jesus had always been God. Always been God. There was never a time where Jesus was not. He was the time, just like his father, just like the son and the spirit, all all three, always God. But at the incarnation, which we celebrate at Christmas time, silent night, you know, all that. Jesus did not stop being God. That didn't happen. He didn't cut himself in half and become part God or less God in order to be a man. He remained fully intact God, his nature, his God nature. But he added to himself a human nature and a human body. And forever will be. So watch this. He, so when we say fully God and fully man, we mean that. Because if he's half God and half man, he can't save us. That, what are we even talking about now? But he's fully God. He never stopped being God. And he's fully man. And because of that, he can take our place. He can be our savior. Do you see that? This is so important for us to understand. Another thing you need to understand is he always will be. So when he raised from the dead, he didn't stop, he didn't stop being a human. He's forever human. He's forever the God-man. He's now the resurrected, glorified Jesus, who is fully God and fully man forever. When you die, you get to heaven, there he's going to be. In all this wonder and glory, eyes of fire, voice like thunder, there he's going to be. Fully God, fully man. Nail scars, love in his eyes. I don't know about you, that's going to be awesome, right? That's who Jesus is, fully man. Now remember why I did it, to reveal God to you. So you have a relationship with God because God, including himself in his divinity, was forever. You couldn't even look at him because you have finite eyes. You are finite. God is infinite in nature. Time was made for us to exist in. He exists outside of time, outside of matter. We think this is all there is. No, there's a whole other realm. He stepped into this for us so that now we can see him. We can know him. He took on a human body. He took on a human nature for us. He was fully man so that he could redeem us. But he was also fully God. Jesus was fully God. That's why it not only says he was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered like a man, crucified like a man, died and buried as a man. I shouldn't say like a man, as a man. But he was also the Son of God, Jesus Christ, our Lord. He's fully God. Look at Colossians 2, 8 through 10. And, and this is important. I can't tell you how important this verse is because I want you to see a couple of things. We, we need to anchor ourselves in historic Christianity. You need to understand we're not the first ones. We're not the first ones to face persecution. We're not the first ones to face a world that seems like it's going mad. We're not the first ones. We're not the first ones to deal with uh, rights of life stuff. We're not the first ones to deal with social justice issues. We're not the first ones to deal with racial issues. All that stuff has always been. The early church was facing things far more insurmountable than we are right now, I promise you, okay? No one's dragging you out of your house wanting to light their garden by putting you on a stick and lighting you on fire. Well, that's what those Christians were dealing with. Nero had lost his mind. He's killing Christians everywhere he could. We're not dealing with that right now, not yet, okay? So they dealt with tough things, and we need to anchor ourselves because they were facing the same stuff. And you would think that was the greatest attack on the early church was physicality. That was not the greatest attack. Look at what Paul says here. He says in Colossians, first, see to it that no one takes you captive. Notice he does not say by Nero's army, by throwing you to an arena with lions, all that stuff's going on. He didn't see that as the greatest attack. What was the greatest attack? And it's still true today. Don't let anyone take you captive by philosophy, by empty deceit, according to human tradition, according to the elemental spirits of this world that are not according to Christ. Now, let's pause right there. Folks, the number one attack on Christianity has always been and always will be what we believe. What we believe. Think about it. Every early Christian that gruesomely lost their life, 
They couldn't take their belief away from them. They couldn't change that. So what was the most dangerous attack on the early church? And what is the most dangerous attack on our church? And what's the most dangerous attack to your kids growing up right now in this world? The most dangerous attack is what they believe. It's how they view God. It's how they view the world around them. And they're being told they can come up with their own way to do that. Their own version of doing that. And the Apostles' Creed stands as a historic context for us to go, no, no, no. This is what we believe. And so, what is Paul's answer to the constant attack from the enemy on our philosophies and what we believe? you got to get truth. And the truth is, verse 9, for in him, Jesus, not part, the whole fullness. Just let that word cascade over you. All of our campuses right now, whether you're in Thomasville or my friends in Robertsdale at Sweet Home Coffee, whether you're in Daphne, Downtown Mobile, Midtown Mobile, online, you need to get that. He was the whole fullness of deity and it dwelled bodily. He was all God, full God, and full man. And you have been filled in him, who is the head of all rule and authority. So important for us to understand. Don't, don't forget this picture of the Trinity that we gave you. This view of the Trinity is very important for you to understand. Jesus is fully God. The Father, fully God. Spirit, fully God. Jesus is, was, fully God, not part. The fullness of deity dwells bodily. Jesus was able to say to the people around him, and it's what got him in a lot of trouble, as he would say, when you look at me, you're looking at the Father. He stood in the temple one day and he said, before Abraham was, Jesus was looking at them and saying, I've been, he was probably 32 years old when he said that. So what he was saying is, I've been a man for 32 years. I was God forever. I've always been. Before Abraham in that desert, I was. There's never been a time that I wasn't. All things were created by me, through me, ultimately for me. It's mind-blowing, isn't it? And yet he's standing there in a human body for us, to save us, to win us, to give his life for us. And that brings us to the next point. Because I promised you in this series that we wouldn't just take a journey to learn more. That's fun, but that's just information. I want transformation for me and you. So as we learn about who Jesus is, it should change us. I want what we learn on Sunday to change what we do on Monday. I want Sunday morning to change Monday morning. Well, how's that going to happen? Because right now, Chris, you just told me God's, Jesus is fully God, fully man. How's that going to change the way I live? Well, this is important because Jesus, the Son, has made it possible for us to be children of God. That means that if you're here today and you're lost and you've been playing this southern religion game where you're a good person, you think that's going to get you into heaven, I just want to make it clear, it will not. It will not. You are going to die. You do have to face eternity. And the only way you get into heaven is through the Son. And the only way you do that is by believing upon Him. That's the only way, guys. But He has made a way. The Son has made it possible for you to be children of God. And it's by adoption. It's only through God. You weren't born naturally children of God. You were born in rebellion. So when you watch the Grammys and people go, we're all the children of God. No, we're not. No, we're all created by him. We're all created by God. How do you become a child of God? By being adopted. Someone had to come get you. Jesus did. Jesus went and did this. And why did he have to be fully God, fully man? Watch this. And why did he have to be born of a virgin? Why did all that have to happen? Why, did he, why could he not receive a sin nature, but he had to be fully God? Why, did, why all of that? Because God is righteous, just, and holy. And loves you. Those two things are true. We have broken his law for him to remain fully just, fully righteous, fully holy. He can't give an inch. None of that can be compromised. So how could a loving God who's also just and righteous and holy bring us into his family without losing any of his righteousness, holiness, and justice? He does it by coming himself and doing what he did for us and making a way for every son and daughter who has become a child of God through the adoption 
of Jesus Christ, for every one of us, God kept completely intact his justice, his righteousness, and his holiness by pouring out his wrath rightfully on our sin in the person of Christ. So that now there's no condemnation for us. And because we have a new high priest in Jesus who is fully human, one theologian says, one nail scarred hand on us humanity and one nail scarred hand on divinity is able to pull us together and adopt us into the family of God. This is, the God, this is what Christians believe. We don't just believe you can have a better marriage. That's great. That's awesome. But this is why. The reason I can have a great marriage and love my kids and not be afraid of death is because of this stuff. It's true. It's what we believe. Ephesians 1.5 says, God predestined us for adoption to himself. So the Father, all the way before you were ever born, wanted you. And he made a way for the adoption to himself as sons and daughters through Jesus Christ. How did he do it? Through Jesus. According to the purpose of his will. It's what he wanted. He wanted you. He wanted. He came and got you by sending his son on a rescue mission. Jesus said, I came to seek and save the lost. That's you. That's me. That's what Jesus has done for us. And how does that change Monday morning? Because Jesus the Son has forever changed our relationship with God. Forever. You now have a father. He's not just some force. He's your father. And Jesus has made you his child. A son and a daughter. Of the Most High. And that matters. And we're going to spend our next few moments today with this astounding truth that we're walking through. How many of you are enjoying the series so far? Are we good? All right, because I don't want to leave anybody behind. Hebrews 4, 14 through 16. I want you to see kind of how to read your Bible here. So get your pen out. Let's do a little pen work. One of my mentors used to say, the weakest ink is better than the strongest memory. Isn't that great? I should, I should have coined that myself, but he said that. So I want you to circle since. Hebrews 4.14, I put it on the screen. Since. Circle it. That's an important word because it's telling you, Ooh, pay attention to what you're about to read. We're going to do something with what you're about to read. Since what? Here we go. Since we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, that means he's God. He came through the heavens. He's God. He's Jesus, Son of God. Then, because of that, let us hold fast our confession. Look at there. Paul believed in the creeds too. Like we confess and we believe something. Well, what do we believe? We do not have a high priest who's unable to sympathize with our weaknesses. Pause. How many of you have weaknesses? Come on, Robert Stell. How many of you have weaknesses there at Sweet Home Coffee? How many of you in Thomasville right now? Come on, Midtown Mobile. Let me see those hands. I can't see them, but you know what I mean. All of our campuses, all of you in this room. How many of you have weaknesses? Jesus gets you. You don't have to be ashamed. He's walked in your shoes. Look what it says. He can sympathize with your weakness because he's one who in every respect, that almost makes us uncomfortable, doesn't it? Every respect, every respect has been tempted as we are, but there's a difference and we better be thankful for it, yet without sin. Adam, Eve, sin. He didn't without sin. Okay, now watch this. This is how to read your Bible. You need to draw a line from that first word since and draw it all the way down to your next circle, which is let us. Circle those two. Let us and that first word since because that's what, the, that's what the writer is telling you. Since everything you just read is true, now you do something. Verse 16. Then let us then with confidence, this is Monday morning, draw near to the throne of grace that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. That's how Sunday morning changes Monday morning because now I don't have to walk in shame. I'm not afraid of God. I don't have to be afraid of the Father. Now with confidence, not confidence in myself, confidence in Jesus. The reason I'm confident is I'm walking in with him. He's the one walking me in. The presence of the almighty Father, Jesus, the God-man, fully human, fully God, nail-scarred hand, grabs my hand and yours and yours and yours and yours. And if you don't know Jesus, if you'll make him your Savior today, he'll grab your hand too and say, come on with me. And you walk into the presence of the almighty, and you don't have to be afraid. You can be confident because of Jesus. You just walk right into his presence. Jesus said, and you, hey, by the way, call him Abba. Abba? And, and he's like, oh, that's right, you're from Alabama. It means Daddy. Just call him daddy. 
From now on, you call him daddy. You sure I can call him daddy? You call him daddy. He's your daddy. You're his son. You're, you're his daughter. Don't you ever think of There's no condemnation for you now. I took every bit of it on the cross. All that's gone. It's been fully paid. Your debt's fully paid. You walk into his presence. You do it every day. This is why we can pray and worship and go to the Father with confidence because our God has adopted us by Jesus, the God-man. That's why it matters. It matters. And so this is what we believe in a world that says there's all kinds of versions of truth. No, this is what we believe, and today that changes everything. Everything. Let's pray together. Jesus, we love you. And in just the first part of studying who you are, fully God, fully man, we know this can impact us so deeply, and we pray it will. We love you, and we worship you, and we praise you, and we honor you now in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs> So in light of all that we've just learned together, let's listen and reflect on these words, on this truth. Come behold the wondrous mystery in the dawning of the King. He the theme of heaven's praises, robed in frail humanity. In our longing, in our darkness, now the light of life has come. Look to Christ, who condescended, took on flesh to ransom us. our prayer that um, if God moved in, in your heart today and like we know that he does in ways that we cannot even explain but if God moved in your heart and he's leading you to him to become a son or daughter of his or maybe God is leading you down a path to be baptized or get involved here at Three Circle we as a staff would love to walk alongside you and help you with those next steps so if that's you you can there's going to be a, a way on the screen for you to text in uh, whatever that next spiritual decision is for you, again, whether it's baptism, serving, maybe for the first time ever getting involved in financial giving, we as a staff would love to walk alongside you and help you with those next steps. If that's you and you don't want to do the digital method or the card method, that's totally fine. You can find some of our staff available in the lobby as well, right there at the hub. As you exit, we can chat there and talk shop about your faith journey, and we would love to do that, as well as we will be down here, myself and some of our staff, right here at the front of this stage for prayer or to talk any of the aforementioned. Um, other than that, you guys are dismissed. Thanks so much for being with us. Happy Mother's Day.
may be darkest, but your light is greater. You light our way, God, you light our way. When evil is rising, you're rising higher with power to save, power to save. We sing that you keep. Chains from 